We have some participants. Hey, oh, people. Good. Okay. Um, cool. Two Nicoles. We are, we are, are we live currently right now, Jen? Yes, we are live. We're open. This is great to go. I'm we're, excited. We're live now. I'll watch my, Maddie, I'll watch my language welcome. Then. <laughs> I didn't do my makeup yet. Put your powder on. Okay. I didn't mind, Keegan. What are you talking about? I, I, I did it all this. I got, can you tell I got the foundation on this one? Oh, like, Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> not turning on my high definition. <laughs> yeah, right. <sighs> I love we have some early people. Well, yeah, because they're on it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to wait until 10 to really officially start. But while we're here, at the bottom of your screen, you guys should be able to see the chat button. So let's yeah, click that and try it out. You should be able to send a chat to got all the right. panelists. So let's try it out. Maddie, how about you send us a little hello in there? You can figure that out. Then we know it's working. I'll be on the chat line. Yeah, Ben is the chat. Yeah, we're going to be the chat. The chat line. So one of the things I can't remember, Maddie's going in. She's high. Hey, Hi, Maddie. Maddie. Hello. Hi. You're in? Okay, cancel. Hotline bling, but I think Ben is without bling, probably. Yeah, so if I look like I'm looking around the screen, it's just because I'm going to be managing the chat. So that's okay. I'm on an iOS device. A bunch of participants. This is great. It's so great. We had 25 people sign up for this. That's Good morning, world, Nicole. That is a world record. Yes, it's <laughs> a world record. <laughs> morning, Nicole. That's so great. Love it. How's our volume? Can you guys tell us in the chat? Can you hear all three of us? Everyone's all good? Can everybody hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three. All, all good. good. Boom. Wow, you guys were like in sync. Yes, all well, good. Nicole said it's all good, then it must be all good. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole is used to the coach's circle because she's come to, I don't even know how many master classes now. So when what? we started this in person, Nicole was like the master of coming to every single circle. So, and she usually brings coffee, which is amazing. <laughs> Where is Nicole um, located? In Isfail, Alberta. Okay, great. So kind of central yeah. Alberta, yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That'll be excellent. Yes. Okay. Circle. I'm just going to keep that on because I have to keep that. Chat four. Got chat four. Perfect. Can you see everything, Ben? You're good to go? Yeah, I'm good to go Tap here. I'm going to tap the screen and not sliding it up like a thing, so that'll be fine. But okay. um, yeah, we're good to go. Awesome. Two minutes till showtime. Two minute countdown. This is pretty cool, guys. No, it's great. Tap great way to start the day. I think I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, know. I put mine on too, just because um, that's what I'm on. So I don't want notifications coming in the top bar. Yeah. Ben, but. actually, I want to bring this up. Ben told me, I wondered why he wasn't texting me back during the day, but usually when he's coaching, he has his phone on Do Not Disturb. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want notifications going to the watch. I don't want anything like, I'm, and then I can, whatever. I just, it's just, just my thing. I, <laughs> you do, well, I guess, I mean, um, you have your whole like apparatus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I plug it in too. Yeah. So I do a lot of my videotaping with my phone. Oh. Um, so then I have to like um, make sure um, notifications are off and text messages yeah. are not coming up. Like, yeah. um, because the, the camera on my Samsung is quite good and I can do slow-mo and things like that. Oh so, yeah, I mean, they're, um, it's, it's true. better than most starfish cameras, to tell you the truth, way better, so. Okay, you guys, I wanna welcome everybody. We are one minute away from getting going, um, but I think it's time to set the stage. I mean, we all love a stage, figure skating people. Um, I just wanna start by saying I am so grateful to Keegan, and to Ben, because in this last week, you both have been a sounding board for me, talking this through. And I, I'm very inspired by that because I think that, you know, leadership is when you show up in times when things aren't easy. You know, it's easy to coast and, you know, everything's sort of day to day and it's easy, you know, we can complain about, are we done yet? Well, when all that falls away and we need to show up and be, you know, true leaders is what I'm seeing in you guys. So I want to honor both of you, very special guys in my life. Um, yes. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> More than mutual. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's start because not 
all of you on the call today um, may know everybody. So I want to introduce, obviously, Ben, ben Ferreira, Janine Ferreira. If you don't know who we are, I don't know how you got in here, but welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we um, have created a company called Stating Success. The whole intention behind the company was exactly what this is, creating space to share and bring more success to more people and a more open conversation. We are in the age of information and the age of technology, which is called open source. And we've embraced that for many, many years. And if you've been at our master classes, then you know that that's our philosophy every single day. And we stand by it. Um, it's important for us to be part of a community and not just isolated um, in what we present and who we talk to and who we help. So that's the skating success intro. Now, Keegan, I am really honored. Okay, I have to be totally honest. I dreamt about this all night. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but in my dream, and the reason I'm sitting at the, the breakfast table is in my dream, you were sitting right here with me in, awesome. at the breakfast table. And actually, so was your mom. Oh, I would love that. Maybe next, the next one she can come with. That but would be amazing. She's in isolation right now, so we need to... She's safe. Yeah. 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 She's safe. So for those of you who don't know Keegan personally yet, Keegan Murphy was an amazing figure skater, very talented, but also um, extremely hardworking. And I know that because I saw him train and I saw him compete. And getting to know you as a skater was an honor because we have known your mom, Eileen, for a long time. And of course, I think that she instilled a lot of that in you. But what's really come out of that is your ability to now lead as a director of a skating club. So Keegan lives in Vancouver and he directs the Connaught Skating Club, which has done an amazing ascent in the last few years under his leadership. And he hasn't done it alone. He's done it through team and building people up, highlighting other people's talents and skills while also honoring his own gifts and talents. So I just wanted to give you that as an intro, Keegan. No problem. Um, I'll just explain the organization a little bit in Richmond. Um, Please. Because we're going to get into different examples and I want people mm -hmm. to understand the context that I'm fortunate enough to work in. Um, the, um, the club in Richmond we have is about just over 800 members now. Um, we usually have about 300 can skaters per season, about 70 junior academy skaters and then about 130 kids between star two to senior. So we have a huge coaching team, probably eight or nine full-time coaches and probably eight or nine part-time coaches. It's all a huge collaboration. We work together. We support all the skaters together. Um, and I mean, we have skaters that compete all over the world on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. Um, skaters that represent Thailand and Chinese Taipei and the USA. Um, are you so are you the Pacific Rim of <laughs> <laughs> skating clubs? Maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll we'll take any country. We'll help any country. But, um, <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a lot happening, um, and I'm so like you said, fortunate to work on a huge team of coaches that are very, very, very talented and very hardworking. Um, but that gives us the opportunity to be really innovative and really explore the different types of classes we can offer, especially right now, online. Sure. So thank you for that, because I think explaining context is important. Everyone is in their own context in coaching, right? Yeah. Some of us are doing it by ourselves, right? Some people are in a remote area where they're the only coach for 100 miles, right? Um, and we honor that. I mean, that is a challenge in today's times, which is another reason why we wanted this online circle. And then some of us are part of big teams, right? But again, being part of a team at a rink is different than trying to gather everyone online. And so that's kind of why we thought it would be so great. I mean, like collaborating with you on anything is great, but I think you have a lot to bring just because you've been doing that really actively this week as well. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we'll just share some ideas and hopefully it's useful to everybody out there. Yeah, so some housekeeping. At your, on your screen, if you're on a computer at the bottom, um, there is a Q&A button that you can press. Mm -hmm. And please enter your questions in there. We wanna be interactive with you guys. We have a little bit of an agenda just to keep us flowing, but put the question out to us. Um, ben is gonna be sort of watching and monitoring those questions and then we'll kind of yeah. pause and answer. So if, you see, if you see me kind of do the things on the screen, don't worry about it. What I'm trying to do is just manage the chat and manage the questions. So just keep them coming and we'll do the best we can to, to get to some here, so. Awesome, so chat would be for comments and then Q&A for questions. I think we'll run it like that so far today. 
right? And absolutely. Um, no polls today. We're trying to keep it simple for dating and technology. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I want to say it's very inspiring to see your background, Keegan, because you're, you're not at the rink. You have a beautiful, inspiring skating context, right? And what the first thing we wanted to talk about today was mental adjustment. So getting used to being at home full time and getting used to, again, communicating with your team in a new way. I mean, we're always on text with each other and stuff, right? But yeah. I don't think we normally FaceTime each other all the time. So. No, this is a new, this is a new world that we're in. world, yeah. So tell us about, for you, um, you know, your, maybe a little bit about your self-care as a coach, as a director, because you're trying to stay, I'm sure, centered and grounded to then expand that out to your team. Yeah, I mean, personally, like, I'm very guilty of the <clears throat> busy, busy, busy. I'm always busy. Even when I don't need to be busy, I'm going to find a way to be, um, very busy. Um, so there has, even just in the last week, there has been needed to be some self-acknowledgement that like, okay, can't really maintain that because there's not very many places to go. And um, I, I've had to do a, a real restructure of my day, right? Okay, so yeah, I don't need to be somewhere by noon. I don't need to be on the ice by 11 a.m. Um, how am I going to get myself going? You know, what sort of short-term uh, to-do list can I give myself for today um, it's been it's been tricky um, I'm usually up moving out the door you know and then then you're in your work environment the time is flying by you don't even think about it you come home you're exhausted you spend time with your your people and then you fall asleep like that's mm -hmm. that's my usual day so this is um, it's been a week of adjustment but um, Absolutely. I'm figuring it out for sure. I think that our sport, and I've talked a lot to different skaters about this, our sport attracts A-type personalities. You know, it, no one in their right mind as a B or C idea would go, oh, let's train for 400 hours and then compete for two and a half minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and then those of us who make it through that piece and through the eye of the needle and become coaches and choreographers, we're like those extreme people who are like, we can skate for 10 hours straight. Awesome idea. So I think you're right about the slowing down. Um, have you developed any rituals or any kind of morning routine that has helped you with that? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, yeah, coffee is like actually what sort of helps get me out of bed every morning. Um, I probably need to work on um, slowing that down. Um, but just... Um, I actually do it before I fall asleep, before I go to sleep the night before. I just try to think of two or three things. Okay, what, what's on the front of the to-do list when you, when you wake up in the morning, right? And if I can just sort of focus on those two or three things, the rest of it starts rolling. Um, but having these online classes with my skaters every day has been a huge help. Um, I've been trying to organize them starting at like 9 or 9.30. Okay. That sort of helps get me going and it helps get, get the, the athletes going as well. Um, so that's sort of the routine I'm falling into. You know, two or three things that I need to do before mm -hmm. I start interacting with my skaters online. I love it. I think what you're talking about is important at any time, which is accountability to others. Yeah. Um, you know, the things we'll do for others, we don't often necessarily, well, I'll speak for myself. I don't always do for myself. Um, I did the same thing. I created a rise and shine show in the morning. It's on Facebook and Instagram and it's live. And so I have to show up. I can't re pre record it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's at 8 a.m. I don't know why I picked that time, but You're crazy. <laughs> it is a little crazy, but it's been, to your point, something to, to get me going, right? And, yeah. and show up for. Um, and you're segueing perfectly into the next idea, which we had was engaging with athletes. And of course, um, this doesn't mean texting every single person every single day but it does mean having something set to engage the athletes during this time of transition and then into what our new normal looks like. Yeah. So um, why don't you talk a little bit about that and then after we'll check in with Ben and see how questions are coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so keep your questions coming in everyone. Just monitoring all that to anything that you guys uh, have uh, for us and we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just check in the Q and A stuff and we'll just keep that rolling as we move forward here, so. So in Vancouver, I know it's been different for everybody, the rollout of the situation. We mm -hmm. found out mm, 
Tuesday, it would have been, yeah, last Tuesday. That was the morning that they said, okay, the rinks are closed, right? And everybody had sort of been, that, that idea had been floating around, you know, oh, they're gonna close the rinks or the malls or, you know, whatever, it's been different for every province, right? right. Um, the timeline. So Tuesday morning is when we got the news. And so um, right away I was talking to um, uh, one of my coaches that I work with who runs our social media platforms. And I okay, said- Okay, hold on, hold on. Can we pause there? You yeah. have someone who can run your social media platform? Yeah. Yeah. So her name is her name is Leah Warwick and she is amazing. And you guys Cheers, are yeah. a great coach. Um, um, but yeah, she has a role within our club. Um, and she is uh, paid to take care of these different aspects. You know, we run it we kind of run it like a business, and this is a huge part of our business. So I love it. So um I don't pretend to be an expert <laughs> on that stuff. She is, but we brainstorm together, right? It's collaboration within our coaching team. So um, me and her talked right away and we said, okay, the first thing that we got to do is um, test our engagement with the membership. You know, we have a, we're lucky we have a huge um, audience. We have a huge membership. Let's just see like what's bouncing off of them. What are they interacting with? What are they not looking at? So we started to roll that out for the first two or three days just different things on our Instagram story, different things on our Facebook. Um, and then that was good, that people were responding like in a really positive way, which was great. Um, mm -hmm. And then we started to do little um, activities. So I went on to like um, Survey Monkey and I made different quizzes for figure skating for different levels. I love um, that. Some, were, some of them were hard, some of them were easy. Um, and then we started doing, um, well, I'm a, everybody that knows me knows I'm a huge skating geek. So I started making like scavenger hunts, which is literally like, um, I would send them like a, a skating event on YouTube, like 1994 Olympics. And I would make like a, like a 10 question quiz out of that and then send it to the athletes. That is so and fun. It, like they had a, they're, they're having a great time with it. And I would give them like, if any, like they're quite hard and I know that they don't <laughs> want this kind of skating. So yeah. um, I would give them like, okay, if anybody can get a hundred percent or the first person that can send it back to me and get a hundred percent, like gets to decide the triple jump that I will attempt in the first week back on the ice. Oh like, my goodness. Go. But I made it really, don't worry, I made it really hard. So <laughs> nobody has gotten a hundred percent. So I do not need to try any triple jump yet. I um, love it. That engagement, you know, that engagement is yeah, really total engagement, and and actually exposing the athletes to something that they don't usually have time to think about or look at. Um, so that was sort of some of the activities that we've been doing with the kids through email and you know things like that. And then um, last Friday and Saturday, we started rolling out the online classes through Zoom, right? Okay. So we tried to give families like four or five days to just sort of realize what was happening with mm. the situation um, and maybe adjust internally some logistics, like are both parents working? Is one working? What are they doing for childcare? And then, so we thought by Friday, Saturday, people were starting to get a little bit restless. So we just started offering 25 minute dryland jump classes. Yeah. Um, and then we continued that they were well attended. So we offered them again on Saturday to even more range of athletes. And by the end of Saturday, we had interacted with 120 of our, uh, skaters. I think that's um, amazing. <clears throat> yeah. The attendance was great. They were all early. They came with their water bottles and, you know, their little outfits. And, um, it was so inspiring to, to just see them and talk with them and, you know, you know, we're correcting their positions and, you know, like telling them to, you know, jump higher, blah, blah, blah. but it's really not about that at all. It's really just the fact that they are there and they're engaged with us and they're seeing their friends on the gallery view. And, um, yeah, so that's how we, that's how we started to roll it out. I absolutely love that. And I thank you for sharing all those different types of engagement with our attendees because yeah, three real different areas. Yeah. The more, the more creative we can be, as coaches, I think the more we're going to feel empowered, right? And not like we're at the effect of it, but we're actually flipping the script and saying, this is what we're doing now. And yeah. I have to shout out to you because 
Um, we've had a few preliminary conversations before we put this out mm -hmm. to everybody and invited everyone in, but yeah. something you said yesterday was so profound to me when I had it into my online classes with the skaters we work with. You said, you know, it's not really right to be obsessed right now about the position or the, the amount of rotation they're getting in the air. It's much more about getting them grounded, connecting, and just honoring that they're there and showing up and being a people for first and results second at this point. Does that still resonate with what you've been doing with your classes? Hey, hold on, I just wanna make sure I'm not having a technical difficulty. Can you still hear me? I can hear yeah. you, yeah. Okay, great, it's telling me- Hey, but by the way, we've got some good engagement here. We got, a, we got a chat saying, Keegan, now this is from Sabrina, loved the skating scavenger hunt idea. So that's already a hit. So oh, okay. good stuff with that. And we, we actually have a couple of um, questions on the, the Q&A panel. Awesome. Um, Take it away. Is, uh, from um, Jean Simon says, what were the early onset challenges you encountered when you started coaching online? So that's one of the questions that we're, uh, we have right at the top of the screen here. So okay. what were the earliest challenges? You want to take that one? Um, yeah, it was just uh, when you're on, an, on a phone, getting it on to gallery mode is really tough. Like you have to, um, and I don't have an iPhone, so I didn't know how to tell the kids how to fix mm -hmm. that. The class really functions well when everybody has their own little square, right? And that's yeah. on the gallery view. So that was the, for us, that was the, the biggest problem. Um, I mean, the kids have to have their camera angle in a really good place where mm -hmm. we can see them head to toe. Um, but it's pretty easy. The kids are actually way better at this than, than the adults. So One little uh, hint, if you're doing the phones, um, yeah. when people open up a Zoom like this, right? we have it live so that anyone who's speaking, right, you can hear them. So when you're on a Zoom call, usually the, the camera will flip to that person who's speaking. But if you have people mute themselves, then it won't flip around like that. So they'll only yeah, hear the person speaking. So there's little technical glitches like that that you can work through. Yeah. Um, so Jaden, can you go back to what you were saying? Sorry, I was having a notification on my computer. No worries. No, what I was thinking, what I really appreciated you said to, I think yesterday or the day before in conversation, we've been talking a lot, um, was just that, you know, as coaches, we want to get in there and coach, coach, coach. And that's, you know, our normal idea. But you said right now, this is not about over coaching or over correcting, that it's about connecting first, letting the skaters see us, we see them, um, honoring them as people and who they're, how they might be feeling and just making it more normal to be online before we get into like detailed correction. Is that? Yeah. And I mean, this is, um, and this is another thing that we'll talk about later, but I was what I was trying to some of the parents about is that like, we like, don't worry, there's coaches, we've got the physical, okay, we can once we get back on the ice, whenever we get back on the ice, we can take care of the physical stuff, the technical corrections, getting them fit and strong and trained. That's, that's not a problem. I'm not concerned at all about that. Mm -hmm. Right now, we we've got to take care of the emotional and the psychological um, state of the athlete, which I think right now is probably fine, but in a couple weeks, we might be having a different conversation when it starts to hit the kids that like things um, are not going back to normal after spring break. Like it's going to be a couple, like <laughs> at least a couple more weeks of this kind of situation. So this is just for us in Richmond, we're just trying to create um, a, a sort of a system where we can catch them when they start to struggle, right? And that's all these online classes are. And if we've already established, okay, you have a stretch class on Wednesdays at 10 and you have a dry land jumping um, Thursdays at 2 p.m., if that's already something that they're showing up for and they've built into their week, when they do start to struggle and their emotions change and they're wondering what the heck is going on and why we're not going on the ice, um, at least we have a place to see that and sort of catch it and maybe talk to their parents about it or have a group chat and ask questions. Yeah. It's really not about like keeping your double axle or keeping your, your triple rotation. You know, you, I mean, that's all good and well, but we yeah. just got to keep the emotional and the psychological state of the athlete really positive and really loving skating. That's yeah. really the purpose of the classes. I, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough for saying that out loud because I think, um, as coaches, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to have all the answers, to show up, to know everything, yeah. um, and to be pushing 
the physical development but you're right yeah, that is like so not like right not now. the not the focus right now in the world like yeah yeah this is this is way part of, our, it's, it's part of our job but if we don't have athletes in front of us who are obsessed and passionate about skating we got yeah. nothing so we got to take care of that first yeah well said ben i think there's another question and yeah you know what we have people really on participating yeah, oh, I do have another uh, question here, and this one's for Emily. This is, uh, what were the things that you found members interacted with on social media? And Emily, that's a great question, actually. Um, well, JD, do you want to take that one first here? So we have, because, um, yeah, that's always that's always interesting, what engages. And I'm always fascinated by that personally, because if we're posting something, <laughs> something will go off this way. Well, I didn't think that was maybe the that great of a post, and then all of a sudden, you know, everybody's watching. Think, you know what I mean? So it's it's um it's always fascinating. Anyway, <laughs> well, you you had um, a great idea, Ben, of just taking a really simple walkthrough of each jump and putting up a very short video. I love that. Oh, you do? Okay, because because the thing was, as I kind of thought, you know, what can I do in this? Because again, we're all in the same boat right now. And I kind of go, well, look, if I can maybe just pump out a video a day, because I'm learning how to do this too. I'm not, you know, the amount of takes that I do on one video, <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's just like yeah, but if I can do something like that, and maybe, you know, that'll expand as it goes forward, then maybe I can do my part. And, and again, the, 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 the focus, I think right now, like you say, Keegan, is off ice, right? Like, what can we oh, do for the course. off ice component of it? And that's, again, to engage, to, again, get creative and go, okay, fine, this is, this is what it's going to be. Um, yeah, it's, and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's been really interesting. I mean, I, I, you know, I got 12 shares on one, and I was like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> like, I'm like, fine. Like, it's just, but it's been, it's been an interesting engagement. So, I mean, to, to answer the question, um, what do you think, Jay? What, do we, what have we found that's been, that's no, been good approach for us? I mean, it's I, been. I'll be totally honest with you. I think. And I always bring everything back to choreography. If you've worked with me ever, you know that, right? But it's not about, oh, she she put her arm here and she did this stretch. Yeah. You never, you're never gonna hear someone say, Well, I love that skater because they always turn clockwise. Mm -hmm. No, that's not it's not technical. It's you love them because you can feel their heart, you can feel their authenticity, you can feel that they love skating. Yeah. You know, I love watching things online that people bring themselves into, and that's the stuff that resonates, you know. I can feel Keegan, you're hundreds of miles away from me. I can feel your passion. I can feel that you want to be here. You want to be in this circle with all of us coaches. Um, you know, Ben, you make the sow cow sound so fun. I want to do the freaking walkthrough. Like, <laughs> it's like, and I've done, I've done a sow cow in years, but it's, you guys, it's, it is, this is what we can do as coaches. This is who we are and what we bring to the arena every yeah. single day that we're bringing online. So, I mean, just to go with the feeling thing you were talking about, um, mm -hmm. I mean, in Richmond, we have a very busy rink. There's lots going on. There's lots of different coaches and different ice. Um, uh, we have ice at this venue, ice at this venue. So we're not always together. Right. So one thing that we did right away that we don't usually have time to do is a question and answer for mm -hmm. the kids with one of the coaches. So, so far we've just done me and then we have the different coaches lined up for different question and answers where the kids or the parents can send in a question to the Instagram or the Facebook. And then we, like we monitor these questions to make sure they're appropriate. Um, and then we answer it out and we put it on our Instagram story. But I mean, that's just another way that your membership can actually engage with you in a for way sure. that you never have time for. Um, and, um, it was it was hugely successful and the kids were you know you can make jokes and be silly with it and um when i was talking to some of the, the parents the next day they just said that those kids were just loving those stories and loving the answers that we gave so um i think that's something any club can do any coach can do um with their clientele so that's something that was really successful on our social and it's it's interesting too because i i don't mean to drive, but i've seen some really interesting stuff on my feed I mean, some people are getting really creative with this and it's, it's really neat. But again, it goes back to the fact there's always a way to do it. It's just, um, and, and getting back to that question, it's, it's amazing what kind of response you do get off some of this stuff because it's like, wow, you know, you don't know. But anyway. Well, the, the this fantastic. conversation that we're having right now is ironically the exact next thing I was going to bring up, which was leading by example. So I think these are all examples of how, you know, you can lead without judging how you're doing it. Just go with your creativity, mm -hmm. right? Because are we all gonna get this right? 
no, but you know, it's, it's a time to show up. It's a time. No, and I think like, um, through all our years of certification and experience, like nobody brought this up to us. Like, oh, when there's a world like spread virus and nobody oh, can skate, how this is you going to handle that as a coach? Like, this was never discussed in, in the yeah. before. Yeah. You know, the manual our, is this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, with, with, because of that, it's sort of just like, just, just go for it. Like, there's no way that anybody is going to, unless you're not, unless you're not following social distancing. That's the only way you can do this wrong. For sure. Okay? But if you're following social distancing, anything you do is just wonderful. And any, any involvement that you have with your skaters and your clients and your membership is to be applauded. Um, because there's, there's so no right or wrong way to get through this. Nobody knows. We're just taking it. Um, I'm trying to say we're trying to take it week by week. Yeah. Because that's sort of short enough but long enough that you can actually do something with. And it's not overwhelming. So, um, is that all, is that really different than what we normally do? Yeah. It, no. Exactly. Yeah. It's something that the skaters can relate to, and something that the coaches can relate to. But yeah. I mean, when you're working your yearly plan with an athlete, you're working week by week, regardless. You're going. How many weeks are we away from the next event? Or you know, how many weeks are we away from Christmas? Well, we need to make sure we have something in place for assessments or whatever. So, guys, I just want to say to the coaches out there, you have these skills. This is not all new to us it's no. just a new format right yeah it's just taking it off the ice right and just being as detailed as we would be with our with our on-ice training we're actually going to do it off the ice now right mm -hmm. um but the, the online classes are not the only way to engage with your membership right um mm -hmm. and you're going to do things that nobody watches and it doesn't get any traction and then you're not going to do that one again but at least you tried and then okay you know that didn't work so i don't need to do that um, so yeah, there's just, there's no possible wrong way to go through this for any of us. We're all just trying to figure it out and, mm -hmm. and do trial and error. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a simple litmus test to go, would I do this in person? Yeah, you know, totally. Would, would I, well, even this is a great example. This online circle came from an in-person circle. Then we just mm -hmm. moved it online. So it's not like I wouldn't hang out with Keegan and Ben and chat with them about skating or want to share it with many people. So yeah. I think that's a good one to test yourself and just go, if, okay, if I was in an arena with the skater, would I do this kind of class? Yes, then it's still going to be valuable online. Yeah. Right? Oh boy, we got a good question coming in Ooh. here, guys. Just interjecting. And Jessica Sawkins Crop, how are you, Jessica? It's been a while. But, um, I'll, I'll, read this, I'll read this one out because this is a pretty good one here. First off, I want to thank the Skating Success uh, Thanks, Getting Success, for creating this wonderful circle for coaches. Well, you're very welcome, Jessica. As a mom of two skaters and skating coach, I was finding the skaters were feeling very disconnected from their skating family. I yeah. created a virtual skating school Facebook page for my skaters, and I've found this is working great. Jessica, good job. We have different lesson plans based on the day of the week. For example, yesterday our theatrical Tuesday homework was the skaters sent in an expression video of them working their Tango Tuesday expression. Oh, my wow. question is, I'm having troubles trying to get all of my skaters involved engaged in this virtual school. Any ideas on how to reach those skaters? Question mark. Jessica, this is, a, like, look what's coming up here. This is amazing. Just fantastic. So, panelists, any ideas that uh, we could give to Jessica in regards to this? Well, hmm. you know, I'll give um, one thing that we did, uh, we did our second try at it last night, um, is that we've just been scheduling what we're calling like group chats, where we invite like um, maybe 20 mm -hmm. to 30 of the athletes and all the coaches, and we just set it up for a group chat. So it's not a class, it's nothing. Um, so last night we had like, you know, 40 of our sort of juvenile to senior kids and all the coaches just on a Zoom call. And it was total, chaos but really hilarious and fun and everybody was talking to each other and messaging each other um that would might be a way for um it would be even easier for a smaller group to just mm -hmm. come like you know you don't have to do anything um just come and just hang out um mm -hmm. maybe i would um, give that a try it's been successful for us um and all the kids love seeing each other just chatting about total nonsense 
Yeah, that's good. Jay, what have we done? We've done email blasts. We've done things like that, have we? Um, yeah, but I, I want to point out here that, you know, every, everyone's processing differently. And if someone doesn't sure. show up, don't take it personally. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's stuff going on. Everyone's family is in a different situation. Parents are adjusting. Totally. And, you know, it's, it's really it's easy to think that, oh, they didn't show up, they don't want to be here. No, nope. you know, you're just starting this. It'll gain yeah. traction. Well, there might be something going on in For their sure. life. Yeah. That they, totally. Getting on the computer is just not an option right now, right? Exactly. And so I think it's really important that we get um, awareness around our own insecurities or ego around, okay, you know, they don't want to talk to me right now. It's okay. It's, you know, if, if you were coaching at the rink normally and a skater didn't show up, you would know, okay, maybe they're ill or maybe their family couldn't get them a ride. Like it's, it's all part of it. So try to just keep doing what we're doing um, with or without the engagement, unless you see consistently there's one or two kids and then you're like, this part isn't working. Yeah, you can reach out, right? But I mean, the good, the good news, bad news with the situation we're in is that we don't, unless somebody knows something, I don't. We don't know when we're going back on the ice at this point, right? So, okay, well that sucks, but at the same time, then we don't need to rush. We can totally take our time with this rollout. We can take our time getting it right. We can take our time getting the right kids engaged with the right type of off-ice training. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we have time <laughs> to figure it out. So, um, you know, if Susie isn't showing up or Bobby isn't there and he's, they're not paying attention, you know, it's actually, we can take it more chill than we usually do. It's true. I was actually than we ever usually have, unfortunately. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't know. Well, well this is good. There, there, we just got another question, you guys. Um, I think oh, it's regarding okay. this all. This one's um, from Nicole, um, from Nicole Ginter. I just want to, hopefully I said that right here. I think it said, I think it comes down to uh, parent involvement too. Those parents are helping their kids online, et cetera. How do you engage the parents, question mark? Is the initial contact through email with schedule of what uh, videos will be released and when? Um, great question. I yeah. think, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good one as we're kind of rolling this out here. Um, Jay, do you want to take that one? <laughs> well, these coaches are right on board. Look, literally my next- That was know, our next uh, thing. Parents yeah. and processing. <laughs> well, there you go. We were, we were dovetailing into that. <laughs> Not <out> the bag. <laughs> good job, good job. Ian, I want you to speak to that because I think you've had a lot of engagement with your parents in the club. Yeah, so um, again, like I'm, I'm so fortunate to work with a huge coaching, huge coaching team that is so dedicated and ready to just like um, go for whatever plan, you know, I, I put on the table. So um, one of the first things we did was that we made a call to eat, a phone call, because I think we're headed in like so much like texting and stuff that we made an actual phone call to each of the parents and just talk to them you know with some human connection um and well we tried we tried to say like hey we're going to start doing this online class stuff and we you know we think every kid should try it if you can figure it out logistically in your family right now um but we tried to finish each call in giving the um parents some tools uh, to help their kid through this confusing time. Like really like as coaches, we have a lot of these skills just from our job about how to work with the kids when they're confused and they're struggling and they're, they're maybe in a dark place where they feel disconnected. Um, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of these parents don't. The parents haven't been coaches and a lot of them haven't been athletes and th that side of their brain might not be that developed. So we each coach tried to talk to each parent and sort of, um, tip them off for you know might, what might be coming and how we would um, suggest they talk to their kids about this difficult situation. So and then that was that was sort of an easy then um, tone set to emphasize why some of these online classes will be important, mm -hmm. right? Um, that staying connected to a passion and having a little bit of structure and schedule in their day. Um, and by the end of each phone call, I think each of our parents were super appreciative and super happy and keen to give it a try. So. Love that. I think okay, that really is really key to bring up that, you know, uh, someone who's an accountant or a lawyer, right? Yeah. A day job. They have a child when they know how to parent that child, but they may not know how to relate 
to their love of the sport. Yeah, or... this, this part of their life, or these part of this, um, this emotion that they might have about missing this one activity that they usually do. Yes. Mm -hmm. I actually made a video um, last week, and I just put it together and sent it out yesterday for clients that our coaches like brain could maybe help the parent brain a little bit yeah and we got to connect it yeah, yeah. We them together exactly um and so i kind of i decided okay i'm making a lot of content just for the skaters but i wanted to make something just for the parents so it was about learning styles and helping them understand their child a little bit more and how to yeah. communicate with their child so you know moving forward that may be another thing where you're making content that's just for the parents that you serve you know, as they're going through this as well. So again, okay. these are all ideas, no rights and wrongs, right? Yeah, no, so in right. terms of schedule, we just put our schedule out. <clears throat> we send like the whole schedule to the, um, to the membership on like Sunday morning about what we're gonna do for the next week. And people are totally welcome to join or if they can't, it's okay. They don't even need, they don't even need to tell us they can't come. It's okay. We're right. going to offer these classes and if you're able to join, you can, but I mean, we're just fortunate that the passion of the kids right now to stay connected is clearly like <laughs> the kids are making the parents like get that camera ready and be on <laughs> class. So it's pretty cool. Well, we, got a, we got another good uh, question uh, popped in the box here. Um, okay. And this one, this one's from Morgan said, and this is actually very relevant to our conversation right now. It says, uh, what were some of the suggestions you made to the parents to help support their kids stay engaged? Great question. Wow. Um, what, what have we got for that? Because that's something that we've been probably dealing with the last, beginning of the last few days is how do we, how do we support them as well? Stay engaged on it. What do you think, Jay? What do you think about that one? Um, okay. What I mean, communication has been a very big part of it for sure. Like in terms of, of emailing certain times, scheduling all the rest of that. Um, I think it, I think, I think we didn't actually have to deal with this that much because the skaters we were working with were still in their season and they were still mentally thinking skating. So we didn't have to push it that hard. We were cut off pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I did, I did really truly to Keegan's earlier point, I invite without pushing so yeah, no no consequence yeah, no. if you can't come exactly yeah. there's no room for that right now no thank you Ta speak to that a bit more keegan yeah I'm, well i just like i think <laughs> the world is in like a, a a funny place that like like skating is obviously second to everything that's happening and as coaches we have to keep that real and we have to keep that tone honest with our client or there's going to be a, a, a a strange feeling um, that what we're offering with figure skating is just a chance for the kids to feel grounded and um, accountable to a little bit of a schedule if they want. Yeah. And it's a place where they can come in, they can be corrected, they can get some positive validation, they can see their friends that they are used to seeing every single day that they're not seeing at all now. Um, but if so, if somebody can't get into that uh, that class or into that space, it's fine. Yeah. It's still gonna go. It's still gonna be there. Like life is so uncertain right now that if we can just offer some continuity, both for the parent and for the child, then mm -hmm. that is like like that's it. Then we've yeah. achieved it. Then we've already offered something really really special. So when again when we were talking to each of our parents, we tried to help them anticipate that right now the children are a little bit still in spring break mode, mm -hmm. right? Spring break was happening, at least in BC. When they shut the rinks, that was the start of spring break. So that, that went really naturally. Um, but I've been trying to just tip the parents off that as adults, we can process it pretty quick. We can get some perspective on what the heck is going on, the magnitude of what's going on. And then we can sort of, sift through it and <clears throat> get a plan for ourselves as adults. I don't think that's the timeline of a 10 year old. I don't think that's the timeline of a 14 year old mm -hmm. um, or of a six year old. So I think that um, that reality is going to hit them in probably two to three weeks from now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why having a passion, having something that you can focus on, having a class that you need to show up for, seeing your friends that you haven't been able to see is gonna be really important. Maybe not right now, but it actually is gonna be more important two weeks from now. 
when yeah. this, I think the struggle for kids might really start. Absolutely. So that's what we've just been really honest with our parents about. And we, well, I might be wrong. I might be totally wrong, but um, um, we're trying. <laughs> well, and, and it's always good to kind of go, you know, skate to where it's going, right? Like, and, and be proactive on that sense first. I mean, even before this kind of happened with it, I, you know, I started hearing stuff and going, um, I think, I think we're going to be shut down here. Like this is, so what do you do with that? You know, then yeah. the next question is like, okay, now this happened. Okay. What are we going to do with this? Where do you see it going for the next few weeks? Hmm. Interesting. Um, maybe we should think about this. So it's just that yeah. it's like, Keegan, it's good foresight. It's really good. Yeah, and also like taking the 20 ideas that we have in our for head sure. about what we could do on social media, or, for example, or what classes we could do online, but like not blowing them all in the first week <laughs> no, <laughs> because we might have like several weeks that we need to keep these kids engaged and we need, we need to roll it out in a smart way. Yeah. So yeah, I only walked through the axle how many times? I yeah, mean, how many times did <laughs> you walk through the axle? Like, <laughs> right. So that's been a bit of a that's been a bit of a balance. Right? Exactly. Saving <laughs> some of our ideas for later. Yeah, for sure. No, that's good. That's a good. One point. thing that helped me, um, I went for a long walk on Sunday, and I've been listening to the book Tribes by Seth Godin because we all have a tribe of our skaters that we work with or coaches we work with, right? And he said that when things change in a marketplace or things change in life, there are three ways that you can um, respond. The first one is the reaction, right? Like, oh my God, this is going on and what do we do now, right? Yeah. Which is kind of that lowest form of, you know, just having an emotional response. Yeah, fight or flight. <laughs> yeah, fight or flight, right? Which we all go through. But then it's like, okay, if we just honor that and then go to the next layer, we can respond, which is a little more thoughtful, like this is going on and then I can respond to it. Yeah. But what we're trying to all do now, and this is where this conversation is holding space for all of us, is we can initiate. So when you initiate something, like you initiated that scavenger hunt, that was you know, very um, creative and you're, you're bringing you know, a whole new idea to your skaters. Like, yeah. yes, the space was created for you to have time to do it now, but you actually, you thought beyond the reaction and beyond the response of just what was going on. So I think that in our own leadership of ourselves, it's like, can I, can I get past and breathe enough to then go to what do I want to initiate so that I'm not responding, reacting, you know, pushing against something, but I'm saying, yes, this is what, what is, and now I'm going to initiate what's next. Does that resonate with you guys? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, but that again, like we all have to give ourselves as individuals, as people and as coaches that what we're, what we're in right now is a total unknown, right? Like it's just, you know, it's just the way it is. It's unknown for the next three, four, five weeks, we'll say, mm -hmm. right? That <laughs> anything that you try to engage within that space um, is not wrong. It's just, you just, you try to anticipate what your athletes need. You try to anticipate what your athletes are going to go through. And you just like put some feelers out there and yep. go for it. That's it. If it doesn't land, it's fine. You're just going to try something else. Right. But, um, you know, and, and, you know, I'm looking all over the internet, all over social media, all over Instagram, Facebook, getting other people's ideas, sort of working off those ideas and just, and then when we have the group chats all together on Zoom, I ask the kids like, hey, did you like that? Did you not like that? And there's, I mean, the kids are really honest and they'll just say that, that, that was too hard or that was, that was boring. Okay, well, great. Now I know, like, I thought it was really cool, but they didn't. So I'm not going to do that wow. again. And, th and this, and you know, we just, just to dovetail in here, we've just got another, I think it's our second question um, from Nicole Gentry. She said, this is, this is, again, along the lines of our conversation. She says, I'm not, to, I'm not so much worried about our young skaters as they can be naturally active, quote unquote, mm -hmm. very true, um, like playing in the backyard, et cetera. But how do you engage the preteen slash young adults who might lose the motivation? Um, like not pushing things, but trying to motivate. And that's a great question. Um, Jenny, I mean, even yesterday too, it's kind of like, you know, you do your, we were doing the one class and, you know, you're asking questions constantly, like, what do you think of this? And of course, the, 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 maybe the jumping's not so liked, that's fine, I get it. But at the same time, at least, you know, we're getting feedback on what they're liking about it. 
um, so we can kind of, okay, got it. We, we can maneuver, we can create um, a little bit more of this over here. So, I mean, that's, that's a great question, Nicole, with regards to how, how so I'll send that out to the, the panelists. How do we keep that age group motivated during this time? I'm laughing because it's just like the, the hardest question to answer in the world. It's <laughs> a good one. Not, not even in this situation, just like on oh. a regular training day. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> if anybody knows, let us know. In general. Um, uh, I think it's really crucial. Like these, those kids are smart. They are, they know what's going on. They're, um, they're paying attention. I think it's really crucial to talk <laughs> about things in short term increments. I'm not going to talk to them about June. I'm not going to talk to them about July at this point. That is, mm -hmm. that is overwhelming. Like if you want to talk about losing motivation, yeah, you just talk to them about what, what, how they're going to feel. Um, yeah. three months from now not a good idea right we got to take it one week at a time um really um keep them focused on staying fit feeling like trying to feel some of the things they feel when they get off the ice right um and a lot of psychology a lot of meditation a lot of visualizing you know just so they can go through the the same chemical process they would if they were training a triple cell right? Or if they were setting up, we're getting ready for their short program run through. Like you, you can simulate those, those feelings and those chemicals off the ice. You don't have to be on the ice, right? But with the teenage group, it is, it's a more uh, careful and maybe a more case by case individual process with the coach because again there you know a lot of distractions right i mean in their life which is which is just the reality right so i mean that makes total sense keegan i, totally there, I mean for that age group it is not a one one size fits all like, mm -hmm. it is for that age group it is pretty specific case by case yeah one of the things i also did yesterday which i don't want to say i lied to them but i kind of just po pointed them in a new direction and i said i'm so happy that we're having this class now because I get to do things with you that we didn't have time to do before. Of course. Almost yeah. Making like this special thing that, ooh, oh, we're doing something special and cool fun and too. fun. Yeah. Which was true because I wasn't actually having a group, you know, dance warm up and the deep stretching. We were already into that deep split stretching and stuff that we haven't had time to be doing because of their busy schedules and all the other stuff. So yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying you are coercing them, but you kind of can into. No, but I mean, you're, you're, you're choosing to focus only on the positive, which is, but that's not a lie. That is a, that's a choice. But I think as a coach, that is often the choice we have to make. So oh, yeah. Your dog, I mean, likes, your dog likes that answer. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. Um, like, on the other night we did, um, we did a yoga class um, with our athletes. And that is, for us, that's not something we usually get into our weekly training. And a lot of them had never done yoga. So, but, so that, was the, that was the case. We were actually getting to do a class that we don't usually have time for. See, yeah. Well, we got another, um, another good one here. And, and thanks to Carla for the message as well. We're, we're, you're very oh, welcome. This has been a lot of fun. Ever. But also, and you know what? This is, this is more, I think, of a good statement rather than question. But it says, I've found my skaters love the tasks, handouts, challenges. I mean, I don't know. I've seen this push-up. You guys seen this push-up challenge going on right now? Like this 10 yeah. push-up? I'm yeah, that's pretty cool. it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I haven't done yeah. it yet, obviously. But, um, you know, it's, it's, that, that's a great statement, too. So challenges, things like that, engagement, keeping them, keeping them going. I, I just expect over the coming weeks we're going to see a lot more creative stuff uh, coming out, too. So, yeah. yeah I mean, I, for me, in my coaching philosophy, I want my athletes to know everything and, uh, everything and anything about Michelle Paul. So this is like right? this is like the moment where Michelle Kwan can be like studied and they can know everything I ever wanted them to know about Michelle Kwan's career. It's now Michelle Kwan propaganda month. <laughs> Absolutely. And I have no problem with that. So I will help you with that because I recently choreographed someone and I was like, do you know who Michelle Kwan is? And she was like, no. And I said, girl, that's what we're going for here. So research that is not allowed in my ring. <laughs> yeah. Get it handled. I said, you need to be like understanding the beauty and we're, what we're going for. Yeah. Sorry, that's a choreography rant. That's for another webinar. Clearly we need so to- yeah, a Michelle Kwan webinar. <laughs> <laughs> we should get her on the webinar. <laughs> oh, that, that would, I would die. No. Anyways. You would fan out. I love it. Ben, is there any more 
questions. I just want to honor because I, I, I think we're really good. Yeah. You know, and, and and I just want to send uh, send a shout out to all the I mean, great engagement today, you guys. And we were starting this off. Um, you know, we've already been thinking about maybe around two. Who knows where this goes the next uh, few weeks? And I, I think know. that yeah, it was it was just great engagement here, guys. And um, thank you all so much for those questions. Hopefully, we were able to uh, help you out. I'm so I'm so in love with this openness, you guys. Yeah, that's awesome. What else have we not covered, Jillian? What was there um, anything else that we wanted to talk about? This was the last piece of it. What what we had discussed was coach connection, which is where we're at. Yeah, what we're doing. Staying now. connected in a community, um, being being leaders, but also supporting each other throughout this time, and also leading the sport as a whole. You know, like figure skaters as coaches, we have a lot of training. As you know, Keegan, like you said, we have all the training that we've done for the NCCP, all of the training we've done on site and in real time. We yeah. can lead as a sport right now. And part of that is going to be how we support each other through this time. For sure. Yeah. And it's going to be really interesting to see um, how we, how innovative we are and how experimental we are over mm -hmm. the next, you know, month or so or whenever. Um, but then I'm, I'm actually most, I don't know, like it's a scary thought, but how does the sport adjust and, and roll back out? at the local level if social distancing is still a thing like a social distance distancing to some level is still a thing i see I that know. bridge far away my friend i know right <laughs> so um there's so much brainstorming to do at a local level at a provincial level at a national level and i like um we should all be motivated that canada can just we can nail this we can be leaders in this we can come up with the ideas and, and be forward um, thinking. But um, as long as the communication within the coaching is open with each other. Yeah. Right. And, but I think maybe sometimes it takes a moment for us as coaches to realize that like <clears throat> figure skating results are not like everything that actual like human health is, is uh, first and foremost, which is what this is making all of us um, remind ourselves of. For sure. Absolutely. I think that's it. You know, I go back to it every day. I feel like I'm a broken record, but I always say people first, athlete second, results third. And it's because to your earlier point, if we don't have people that are healthy, engaged, whole people, then we don't really have anyone to teach. And we don't yeah. really have. Well, and that is like, unfortunately, like literally where we're at right now. Like, <laughs> like humans have to like be happy and healthy and, and available to do figure skating. If we don't have that first, then we have nothing after that. So um, we got to go step by step right now, week by week. Yeah. So if you heard about this webinar in the coaches circle, then you know you're already part of the supportive community. So mm -hmm. please use it. I mean, we've created it as a place for us all to come together. Um, thank you, Keegan, for inviting so many. Yeah, it was great. Keegan, it was awesome. all the group. Um, so great. And um, I want to, I wanted to say, I am honored to be part of this and with all of you. And I, I don't take it for granted. I know there are people in careers right now who don't have this dialogue yeah. to be had or a place to turn to. So I'm super grateful to everybody. And um, Ben, what's your closing thought or statement or anything from the chat we're missing? Well, you know, maybe I'll just kind of close it off with just a sinker of, of just um, maybe a, a phrase and a quote that I, I heard one of my mentors, John Wooden, say. And I want to just share this out of the coaching community as maybe food for thought. And it says, um, no spoken word, no written plea should tell our youth what they should be. Not all the books upon the shelves. That's what the teachers are themselves. So if we can just lead by that example um, and, you know, accept this challenge and change this upon us. Yeah, um, I think we can really do a great job. So that's my closing. Wow, every I've heard you say that poem many times, but it hits me every time. So thank you, Keegan. I really, I really appreciate your time. I want you to just share kind of where you're at personally and where you want to close the circle. Mm, I like it's strange, but like I'm oddly motivated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I know why, but like. Um, I, I just want to, I want to be there for the kids. I want to um, help them stay true to their goals, the goals they had three weeks ago and the goals that they're going to have in the next three months. And if 
um, I can be a support for them and my coaching team can be a, a safe place for them, um, then we're, then we've succeeded, right? We, there will be an end to this. We will get through this. There is the other side of the road. Um, mm -hmm. so if we can, if we as figure skating can be a bridge to help the kids get there, then we have, we've already succeeded. So I'm just motivated to give it a try. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, at least we tried, right? So any ideas and, and questions you guys have, just throw it out there and, and it's great to interact. I love it. I have to give you credit. This was truly your idea. Um, so you have created already and innovated a new product called Dopiness Webinar, where we can hang out with you and we can share this with other people. Of course, moving forward, we can bring other people on and have other interactions, but I thank yeah. you for pushing us too, you know, to, to stretch the circle and make a, a bigger impact. So thank you, Keegan. You're welcome. And thanks for, um, yeah, giving it a shot. I think we can, I think we can succeed big time. I think so too. All right. I always thanks. end every session with Nama Skate. Nama Skate. Okay. Thank you guys. Hi everybody. Thanks for coming on everybody. We will have the recording. I'll figure it out how to put it on YouTube and then we'll put it up in the coach's circle. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.